So the clocks are going back again. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you three ways that you can navigate this clock change to minimize the disruption to your little one's sleep. Now stick around to the end because I'm also gonna to explain to you how you can decide which of those three ways is gonna best suit your unique child too. So let's get started. The first option for navigating the autumn clocks going back is to take the gradual shift. Now, a gradual shift means exactly what it says. We're gonna shift gradually towards the time change. We're gonna do this in 15 minute increments from the Wednesday when the clocks change that Sunday. Now that's you change in the middle of the night on the Saturday night, so when you wake up on Sunday morning, we're on the new time. So if the clocks are gonna go back during the night on Saturday night, we need to start on Wednesday. And what we're going to do is we're going to just nudge the bedtime that little bit later from Wednesday night. So let's use a 7 p.m. bedtime as an example. If your child normally closes their eyes and drifts off to sleep at 7 p.m., then on Wednesday, we are going to just nudge that to 7.15, a sleep time. Then on Thursday, we're gonna make it 7.30. On Friday, it will be 7.45. On Saturday night, they're going to be going to sleep at 8 p.m. But that 8 p.m. is going to be the new 7 p.m. when the clocks change. So when they go to sleep at 8 p.m. on Saturday night, the clocks will go back one hour in the night time. So they should wake at their usual time in the morning. So when you go into Sunday, you start the day as normal. You have your usual routine and your usual meal times, and then you go back to your normal 7 p.m. bedtime because that will feel the same as it did on Saturday night. So that's top option one, your gradual shift. Now the uh, second option I'm gonna give you is to meet in the middle. So in this example, if bedtime is normally 7 p.m., we're gonna just meet halfway and we'll go for a 7.30 p.m. bedtime on clock change night, which is the Saturday night. So you just carry on as normal 7 p.m. bedtimes and then on Saturday night, you just meet in the middle and do a 7.30 bedtime. And the third option I'm gonna give you is the one fell swoop. In one fell swoop, you just change the time. And so I would do this still on the clock change nights so on the Saturday night. So you carry on as normal 7 p.m. bedtimes and then on Saturday night, you push it all the way to eight and you actually just move it the whole way um, to 8 p.m. bedtime that night, and that should be the same length of nighttime sleep for waking up at the usual wake up time in the morning, as the clocks will have gone back an hour in the nighttime. So those are three different strategies and three different ways that you can approach the clocks going back. How do you know which way to go for your child? So these are the questions to ask yourself. If your little one is younger, so if we're talking about a younger baby who is still taking regular naps through the day, uh, they're likely to be more sensitive to the times because every sleep counts. They're not used to going huge long stretches and so the sensitivity is gonna be there. So that would be a good reason to take the gradual shift in the 15 minute increments. So any babies that are still napping at least three naps a day, some even in the two naps a day, you'll probably wanna take that gradual approach. If your little one is um, maybe not so much on the younger side, but they're really sensitive. They're very sensitive to change. Perhaps the super alert types who religiously wake up at the exact same time every morning, no matter what time you put them to bed. Again, there's a real sensitivity to time. So I would again take that gradual shift with them. But if you have a little one that is easier going, they're really flexible. You tend to be able to bend and shift with routines without that having a major impact on them. Or if they are that bit older, then you might just get away with going for one fell sweep. And you'll know this because you'll know that you can keep them up for an extra hour and it won't break them. They won't be exhausted. It's not gonna make them a, a grumpy, tired mess for the next three, five days. So. If you feel you have a more easygoing, flexible little one or you know, an older child, then you'll, you'll probably get away with doing it in one fell sweep. And if you're not sure and you feel like, oh, I actually need a bit of a halfway option here, then go for the meet in the middle. If you feel like a gradual might be too gradual or the one fell sweep's gonna be too much of a jump, then just meet in the middle and you've got that middle of the road option there as well. 
Okay, so I hope this video has helped you with three different ways that you can navigate the upcoming autumn clocks going back. Stand by because in my next video, I'm going to be talking all about crying and sleep training. This is not to be missed, so make sure you hit the notification button, subscribe to my channel so that you get a notification when that video comes out, because it's gonna be great. I'm gonna share all the tips about what crying means, how it is or isn't there with sleep training, the myths and the facts, so you can really understand that. So I'll look forward to seeing you in that video, and in the meantime, sleep soundly. Mm -hmm.